Good evening. Good evening. I would like you to follow me rather carefully because generally when I speak, I'm more than often misunderstood. <laughs> and so I need to make some clarification before I get into my lecture. Number one, I am not a theologian or a philosopher, no theosopher. I do not have a particular religion that I follow, whether it is Islam, Christianity, Judaism, the Yoruba faith, Ngai, or any of the deities. So please, I am not going to speak of your religious philosophy. I am speaking of the development of various religions and where they came from, their origins. And that is all. It may be necessary for me to say something that may not, not it is not, I, I withdraw that. It will be necessary. <laughs> for me to speak about things that are going to hurt you. And I don't care. <laughs> if you know me in any manner, you know this is the way I am. First, you have to understand a 19-year-old man just finished the University of Puerto Rico as an engineer, civil engineer. At least that's the piece of paper they gave me. Going home to Ethiopia because of the insults I withstood at the University of Puerto Rico and the College of Engineering and Agriculture at San Germán. I had to withstand a number of insults particularly when they have pictures of Tarzan and Jane. <laughs> Having gone to Puerto Rico at age six, my mother being a Puerto Rican, my father being an Ethiopian, and I was born in Ethiopia in the Hebrew community, otherwise called Falasha community by Westerners. So you could see that I had difficulty from the first time I got to the Western world, being black in color and a Hebrew, you call it Jew, it, that in itself was a conflict in the Western world. In my development as a young man in Puerto Rico, having stopped at Brazil for a short time, two years with my father, who was assigned there by the Jasu, that was the emperor of Ethiopia who was overthrown by High Sassi and Abunat Johannes. Having nothing, we ran from not going home, we couldn't go, go back to Ethiopia, at least my father. And so we wound up in Cuba, from Cuba to Puerto Rico, my mother's home, where I grew up between St. Thomas, St. Croix, and Puerto Rico. Going to St. Thomas, most every weekend for the Amit Shabbat, that's the Friday night service of the Hebrews, to a, the oldest synagogue in the Western Hemisphere, <coughs> And at time in St. Croix, which had no uh, synagogue, only two Jewish families there, you can understand that it was difficult in my growing up, but I was glad in a sense because I got, got an opportunity to eat ham, and I would not have gotten it in elsewhere. My mother, please, and please, I got to make it repeat again. Some of you have food habits, they aren't mine. I eat what I want, and to hell with anybody else who don't like it. <laughs> now, uh, because with eating ham, eating anything else I want, I still did what I did. And a lot of people who don't eat ham, who don't eat this, who don't eat that, and they haven't done a damn thing. <laughs> so, I eat what I want, and do something. <laughs> So understanding that, when you must realize there would be quite a lot of difference between myself and a lot of other people, 
I did not have the benefit of professors' documents to lead me or to teach me or to write from. In 1939, when I first went to the Nile Valley, first just to see for myself what my father had sent me to see after listening to certain teachers insult me, don't have the time to go along with it, explain it, got there and became fascinated with it. And from that moment, deciding that this is where what I have to do, though I had gone to engineering and would finally would, would go on to law and from law, would go on to anthropology, not necessarily in this manner. I was bound to have difficulties from that time because I had to go into a field where there was not one other African person in Africa. From Ethiopia, the beginning of Nile, and from Uganda, also the beginning of Nile, I had to go down the entire Nile, ending in the great sea we now call the Mediterranean Sea, and at times with professors and leaders who did not want me there. It meant that I had to sleep. There was in those days the crocodile infesting waters of the Nile. And there were also other things like the cobra snakes. I had to sleep in bags, not knapsack, they weren't that sophisticated yet. Away from the fire that kept away these dangerous animals and reptiles, sometimes as much as 50 feet away from the Europeans because my blackness may have come off and touched them. <laughs> Nevertheless, I would not say what you would say God would with me. Something was, and I survived. But I had to go to temples with no formal knowledge of where I was going, no other works to read, no works to read from, but to start somewhat of the beginning, virgin territory. So it would be quite difficult to try to understand me as you may understand many others. Many people had the opportunity of reading books and could criticize and could criticize those works. As I said, I had no books. Everything I had to work from was from scratch. But I had something else that many did not have. I had the common people, as a, what we would say, who no one was looking to. All of the European, quote unquote, researchers, and archaeologists, thieves I call them, tomb robbers, grave robbers, that was their primary purpose there. And therefore they make no contact with the indigenous people. They didn't ask anyone there what he or she know or knew about these monuments. They took for granted that none of these people, indigenous people, knew anything about what they were living amongst. I found to the contrary that there were many of the sages within the communities who not only knew about the temples but could read the many different writings and the temple walls and other structures. Not only that, I found there the craft of Amun Ra. And in the craft of Amun Ra, I found that the same initi initiation studies, the same evolutionary process of the study of engineering, science, law, medicine and the seven liberal arts, etc., was intact. And it was then, it was intact from before the first dynasty in 
4100 before the common era. And it is still intact this very day. And that is one of the errors I find right here in the United States among, quote unquote, the intellectuals. They too, we too, Africans, go to Africa and we feel that we know what the people there don't know and we are going to come here and we're going to revive the whole thing, carry it back to Africa and then teach the Africans at home what to do. The Africans at home are waiting for it. <laughs> no, the Africans at home, most of what I will speak to you, remember, comes from the local people at home. Most of my training were with people who came from the villages. Right now, my best teacher to this very day is the grandmaster of my lodge. I will not go into detail. And when you go to a certain temple in Egypt, you find him teaching only those whom he's supposed to teach. And I may say this. You may use the Western term or the American term, education is for the masses. Some education is for the masses, and the education system under which I come is not for the masses. It is only for those who are seriously inclined to secure a certain amount of education. It is only for African people, and it's only for African people who desire to go home and study, and we make no apology for it. You may call it racist, you may call it sexist, we don't give a damn. That's the way it is, that's the way it's set up, and that's the way we're gonna have it. We had it from 4100 BC, and we're gonna continue to have it for another 4100 years, if necessary. Now, about the African origins of Christ Judaism and Christianity, and I'm sure that you must add Islam in this. There is no problem, and I can't see the problem at all. We are going to list them in terms of their being. I don't think you could find any problem with me, my mother, and my father, who come first. With my mother and my father, both of them are first with my life, because it needed both of them to produce me at the same time. So I say these two are first, then myself. <coughs> There's no question then between me and my children who come first. I come before them. If you have Judas, uh, let's take Islam. I gotta make this because a lot of people are still argue some craziness about Islam is the first religion. <laughs> and you have Christianity, that becomes the first religion equally. And Judaism becomes the first religion equally. Yes. When the first person dealing with Judaism, we're going back to it now, is a man called Abraham from Asia a place called the city, outside of the city of Ur, you are, in the nation of Chaldea. And that was no better than when the Africans along the Nile are in, already in the 13th dynastic period, which will be about 1675 before the common era. So that's Abraham. Otherwise it's called Abraham or Ibrahim. The first time you are going to hear about Christianity is with Pantheus and Botheus. That's of 70, uh, 1992 years ago. And that will be Pantheus. This is when the Africans of Egypt are
are under Greek colonialism. They're speaking the Greek language and everything like that. The Romans have taken over and the Byzantium period is coming. Pantheus and Boethius. And the last is, and the last is Muhammad Ibn Abdullah and three other persons. One, Hassad Kubad Ibn Rabat, otherwise called by some today Bilal, from Ethiopia. <coughs> the second, Omar the Great, so that what is Hassad? Hassad <coughs> Kubad. Ibn Rabat. <coughs> Otherwise, call Bila. By the way, let us get it. He's, a, he's, a, he's an a, a, a attorney he's a, uh, from Ethiopia, the ambassador of Ethiopia to Mecca. That's the first you are going to hear of him. The other one is Omar the Great. Omar the Great and Abu Bekar. Abu Bekar. Now, then Muhammad, I put him in front because as Islam went down, he became the first spiritual leader. Muhammad ibn Abdullah. But even and these other two offered him to be the spiritual leader when they first started. He turned it down because remember of, the, of those, he was the one that was prepared. He was a, a tonic with his problem, fight with Ethiopia and Arabia the government in Mecca, he was held and ransomed, eventually placed into slavery. Most people, when you think of slavery, they think of a man digging a hole all the time with a pick and shovel. You could be a slave and be a physician, be a slave and be a lawyer, as he was, an ambassador from another country, or a seamstress, or, or whatever. When we talk of slavery, most of us have in mind, always just only a man digging a rock. No, he was a lawyer. And then became the slave of the wife, of the husband of a woman named Khadija, a wealthy man who later Muhammad would marry. And that was not until Muhammad did not become the, the, the person who would equally add to what was already Judaism and Christianity and a third element, and that would become Islam. And that was not until 622 of the common era. Or 1AH. CE common era or AD equal 1AH. Uh, after the Hajira, one year after the Hajira took place, the Hajira being the, when Muhammad ibn Abdullah had to flee Mecca to establish the religion of Islam outside of the city of Medina. Rock, let's deal with it. It's not, of course, this is the best one for a small thing. I will need it later. This would be the Tigris and you afraid this, this, sorry, here. Yeah. That would be the Red Sea. This, <coughs> this would be the point here, Soweta, which would be sticking out to, to Spain. Just want to start this a little and 
this will be where Egypt, where Asia and Africa meet. I use this in terms that you are familiar. Here, it is most of you have your maps cut here. The separation of Africa and Asia did it, uh, and it, uh, Asia is not here. Not here, rather. This is the present Suez Canal. It was not cut by Khadif Ismail, or he started it, until the 19th century, 1800 and Therefore, the Sinai still belongs to, to Africa and not to Asia. So this is Sinai. This is the Nile. This is the Nile. It's important that I put it. This is the Great Sea, you know, called the Mediterranean. This is the Ethiopian Ocean, Oceanus Ethiopicus, now called the Atlantic. And of course, this is the continent of al -Kibulan. You may call it any other name you want. You could call, and by the way, it has nothing to do with anybody named Leo Africanus. Leo Africanus was called that Akbar, was changed his religion and became a Christian under the time of Pope Leo. Pope Leo himself baptized him and gave him his name. The term Africa was used by the Greeks hundreds of years before Leo Africanus became a Christian. So this nonsense about African names after Leo Africanus needs to be put to rest. Now, Christian Judaism the first of the three so-called Western religion, world religion if you're going to call it that, is no way around. Adam and Eve is no way around. Jehovah God is no way around. Jesus Christ equally and Adam. Not one of them is any way around before 1675, Abraham gave to the world, Abraham, the first man that spoke about anything we today call Judaism, is a man named Abraham. And he is not until the 13th dynasty of the Africans. Thus it means, using the dynastic period of reference from 4100, to the beginning of Abraham's birth, not when he said a thing, his birth. I'm not even crying yet. <laughs> five plus ten is five, seven plus nine, two, six, six, yes, six plus uh, ten, four, and one plus three, two. Two thousand four hundred and twenty-five years before Abraham, before anybody mentioned any God named Jehovah, any a uh, child story named Adam and Eve. <laughs> there is no Jesus, no Mary, no God. Yet. <laughs> See? And I don't need to mention Christianity, I don't need to mention Islam. If I deal with Judaism, I can put Christianity and Islam in a bag, throw them home because they copy from Judaism. All I need. So let us deal with it. <laughs> Already in 4100 before the common era, the first dynasty, there is a book that the Africans on the Nile had already edited. Already edited. It is called the Book of Common Food by Day and by Night. So what is Budge of England? copied it and, and, and uh, translated it into English in 1895 and called it the Egyptian Book of the Dead. So, right there, if you take 4100, I already have it there, 2425 years before Abraham, 
Abraham, and there's no Abraham didn't write a single book, and you add the period of Abraham, 1675, to the period of Moshe, Moses, who supposedly wrote the books of the Torah, you have 1340 when he got here in this world, so you got us, his 1340, to that. And with me over 3,100 years before Moses and the book of Exodus, because Moses cannot write Genesis because he doesn't know anything about the concept of Genesis. He doesn't even know anything about the concept of Exodus. He doesn't write a single book. Moses disappeared according to the Torah, according to the, the Torah, and the Torah is the authority for the Jewish religion. They said that he appeared 40 years walking in the wilderness after he had his altercation with the Pharaoh. They didn't give the name, but they're talking about Ramesses II. That will mean that 1196 BC, he died. Oh, disappeared. Nobody knows. That with a vacuum cleaner, they brought the vacuum up in the air, and disappeared. He disappears. But the same Torah in the book of Exodus said what? Moses was learned in the ways of the Egyptian priests. Now that's your book. No, your Torah, your Old Testament said it. It isn't mine. I didn't write it. I am just quoting it. If Moses was learned in the ways of the Egyptian priests, what was the ways of the Egyptian priests? An Egyptian priest starts out as a young man, seven years of age. <coughs> he goes to the Grand Lodge at that time. In, in, in ancient times, he went to the Grand Lodge in Sahara, the first Grand Lodge. But Moses is born during that time. This is long before. Moses, in the time of Moses, he went here to the Grand. I'm sorry. Yeah, he said he went here to the Grand Lodge of Waset. W A. SET, which the Greeks later changed to, uh, to Thebes, and the current Arabs changed to Luxor. So you would have had to come here, get circumcised at age seven, stay there for 40 years of education, never going home once. So you talk about 10 years for a PhD. This is 40 years. <laughs> in 40 years, he learned engineering, law, medicine, science, and the seven liberal arts, etc. So Moses must have come here and spent 40 years after being seven years of age. When he was completed, what did he learn? Well, one, a few of the things that he learned, the teachings of Amenhotep the fourth, otherwise called Akhenaten. Thus he learned the concept of the one and only true God by the name of Aten. Now, if he learned the concept of one God, how come way later, after Akhenaten is dead, he gonna get the concept from God again for the first time? <laughs>
that's already there. Now, there's only ten that Moses co-opted, if in fact there was a Moses. <laughs> in most religion, we forget that mythological characters are not necessary historical figures. But assuming that there was a Moses, <laughs> we got to go and find out why is it you only took ten? You only know ten, but you forgot the other thirty-two. Otherwise called the admonitions to Goddess Ma'at, or negative confessions as you say in the West. Now, where can I find them, you say? Well, in any temple, but I will carry you to one specifically where you can see it's always open. And that would be the tomb of Ramses the Sixth in the Valley of the Kings. And anybody going to Egypt, you will get a chance to see it. So it just depends on who you're going with. Hopefully the person can read. Hopefully the person know where it is because some of the leaders carry it to Egypt don't know if Cairo is in Moscow or, or, is, in, or is Peking. Now, they must carry you there and you will see that. You will see God Kunum. By the way, let's go and add one more. They tell you that Jehovah took some dirt, clay, I guess he had some water, <laughs> and made Adam and Eve. That's on the first page of Genesis. One. Of course, there are going to be some changes in Genesis 2 and 3. Right. Instead of being made, uh, the two women, the men and women together, one will get created and the other made. And then uh, a whole lot of things. We spend the time. But let's deal with Adam. Because I'm going to carry you to a place called Philae. I'm going to carry you. It's Phila is the name they give it. The proper name is Angelica. So no be an I'm going to carry you to other places. And I'm going to carry you and show you where Judaism, Christianity, and Islam plagiarize. Steal. Stole it last time. <laughs> the concept of God Kunum, K H N U M. who made man and woman on his potter's wheel out of clay. The Jews, the Christians, the Muslims stole it, and the only thing they left out was the potter's wheel. But they got the clay and the water, and I guess the snot <laughs> growing in the, in, in, in the man's nose got that done back. Now, already you see why I'm controversial, because I, I, I don't play around with the words. Now, is it strange that in the book of coming forth by day in the rare section, in a section called the Osirian drama, which would should be the Asaroan drama, all this is there. Isn't it strange that in the temple, the temple of God, and there's a temple of God Kunum at a place called Esna. And by the way, if you're going to Esna, don't go. You're wasting time. <laughs> Unless you're archaeologist. There's nothing there but four, uh, four walls. The Christian, early Christians and others, Muslims, came and chopped everything off. Every temple you go to, you're going to find where they chop things off. Or chop it up. She's trying to kill the evidence. So you're going to eliminate Esther. We don't go there because it's a waste of time. You're just going on a deep hole, about 35 foot deep, and you've got to go down there and then walk up a metal step to get out and you will see nothing. So that save yourself that time and go to the other temple. <laughs> now, but you can go to the temple at Philae in Aswan and see at what is called the Mamizi. You can see at the Mamizi, God Kunum making man and woman on his, uh, on his father's wheel out of clay. You see, that is the best one remaining. Of course, 
There are many other tombs where you, temples where you find it, but this is the best preserved of all of them. Let's take another part of it. You then must understand the calamity of all of this is to show you are just like Pavlov's dog. That the dog that wouldn't drink if he was thirsty and starving uh, uh, to death, thirst to death, unless a bell rang. Somebody got to ring a gang, and a special gang, for him to eat or to sleep or to stool or to do anything. You are like that. You don't want to think until somebody hit the bell. Now, I'm going to try to ring the bell for you. You said that the Jews built the pyramids. The pyramids, remember, not only pyramids in Egypt, I'm not talking about those in South America, but they're pyramids in Sudan. The 82 pyramids of Egypt, 82. Do you tell, you told me that the Jews built the pyramids made of bricks out of straw and mud. Of course, of water. <laughs> now, Abraham, the first of the Jews, Hebrews or what, Haribo, Haribo, and any name you want to use, isn't born until the dynasty, the last of the 82 pyramids is built in the 12th dynasty. <laughs> now how the hell are you going to build a pyramid and you're not born? The first of the line isn't born much less you, but that's born. Before I was sent to Egypt by my father, I was a Pavlov dog. 
Behave like that. Like all of you behaving. <laughs> but the pyramids of Egypt are all confined at lower Egypt. Here's upper Egypt because the land. We go up south, you go down south. In Egypt, we go up south because the highland is in the top. All is confined here, north of Cairo, not south of Cairo. But they pick out the biggest pyramid. When Edwin Koch went there, I got my tape recorder. When Edward Koch went there, <laughs> I, 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 Edwina Koch went there from New York. And Begin just died, went there from Israel to the largest of the pyramids, the one of Khufu. I mean, I'm sorry, his son Kafra. By the way, it is Kafra, K A A. F-R-E, or you must use A, it's all right. Not, not Cheops. There is no Cheops. His father, Kufu, K-H-U-F-U, or X-U, F-U, is not Cheops. That's Greek. That's the Greek put back when they came. And uh, Kafra is not Sephirin. That's the Greek put that. And Mekara is not uh, Mycerinus. That's the Greek, the last part. But they pick the biggest one, the one of the, the, the father of the fourth dynasty. Those here at a place called where I live, Giza, the plateau there, Akhet Khufu, the plateau of, or the horizon of Khufu is the one that is three and a half city blocks about 640 feet by 640 by 48 stories high. I hope you can understand why it is that Egypt must remain white. And Egypt cannot be in Africa. It must go to the mythological continent of the Middle East. <laughs> with things like this. May I remind you again, it is very important that there isn't a single nation in Europe yet which include Etrusca, later called Rome, or Pyrrhus, later called Greece. When I come to 883, the writings of a man called Homer especially the Iliad and the Odyssey, then I reach Europe. Until such time, Europeans keep quiet. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. <laughs> talking to Africans and Asians right now. Isn't it strange? You see why the curriculum got to not revise? Because we scuttled it. <laughs> <laughs> because I am going to deal with death and resurrection. And you are telling me that Jesus was the only man that died and rose and went to his father, God Jehovah. You said that because you know, you're a child of God. You've been saying that so long that you haven't read. You haven't tried to find out facts. For you, truth has been given for you from Rome. Michelangelo's cousin. You got that. <laughs> that Jesus with his blonde blue eyes here that Michelangelo painted for Pope Judas II in 1509 to 1511. But I'm talking about the resurrection of Osiris. And the resurrection has nothing to do with going up there, flying, going up the sky. It had to do with a penis from a dead level, horizontal, rising to a perpendicular. And when you go to the temple of Seti One, the Pharaoh Seti One, at a place called Abydos, the first Abydos.
Artemis is a Greek word. And on the other side of this temple, you are talking about the Immaculate Conception and Virgin Birth, which the Christians adopted. You will see Goddess Isis becoming impregnated by it, an Immaculate Conception. And by the way, it had nothing to do with the absence of a penis. Most of you women here who are mothers have been immaculately conceived. You don't know it because you think that your vagina is something dirty and, and bad and you can't even talk about it. When you get married, you can't talk to your husband about sex. It's dirty and everything like that. You got the, I, what I call it, the romance. You got the Roman romance. You got to pull down the sheet. You got to pull down the, the curtain, the ceiling. <laughs> if you're going to have sex. Some of you come with your helmet on and you put down the shoe. Can't even get naked. No. And the immaculate conception is when a man and a woman slept together and she missed her period. But she had not been with any man other than this man since her former period, the last period. Therefore she knows that it can be no other man than him. Now if she's been going with Tom, Dick and Harry, <laughs> She wouldn't know who it is made her pregnant, therefore she couldn't have an immaculate conception. Huh? She could have had ten children before. She could have been with the army. As long as that time between her last period and the time of inception, she was not with another man. She knew definitely it had to be him. That's immaculate conception. If For the next nine months, which will be ten, the ten, nine visible months when she didn't see her period, she had not touched another man. If she went with the unseen time, it doesn't matter. But another man besides him, then she gave birth to a virgin born child. It had nothing to do with her hymen. Go to the temple of Satai one in a small chapel next to the fifth Holy of Holies. And you will see it for yourself. But you will also see where the early Christians and others tried to chop out that evidence. But the more they chop it, the more pronounced the penis stop. <laughs> so they give up. <laughs> you know there's 16 crucified saviors. Jesus is the last story of the crucified saviour. Because the grave wrote a book called the 16 crucified saviors. See, all of them in one book. John Jackson, John, John J. Jackson wrote one for Christianity before Christ. And so forth. And you will see them all listed in one book. But again, I need not go any further to support what I'm saying. I could stop right here. But I know you are uncomfortable. So I got to put some more salt <laughs> in the meat to season it that it won't spoil. <laughs> now I know if I speak to you in common language, you must understand me. So I'm staying away from all those 16 syllable words and so forth. I'm just a humble little African mind, you know, and we don't think good, especially when the missionary didn't train. <laughs> go back because I know you have your own idea to tell me how wrong I am because you're going to tell me that you know that it's these things that I'm speaking about are man-made and they deal with man whereas you are not dealing with man 
if you weren't an aunt dealing with men, then I must ask you, in what way different did Mary have her child than any other woman in this room or in ancient Egypt or in ancient anywhere had their child? Did Mary have pain? Your Bible says that she took pain and had to be rushed to her a stable because she could get place to sleep and eat and what not. Did Mary nurse her child? That's what most of you don't do. That's something she probably did. She did that you all don't do. Because you all complain about child going to put your breast out of shape. But if the child got little bristles, that bone. And the man got big bone. He <laughs> don't put, he don't put your, your breast out of shape. But that's him.
going with another or a woman with another is like a man stepping in the feces of a dog. In other words, putting your foot in doo doo <laughs> without the shoes on. And you know you won't like that, even if it's hard. And the God of the earth, Jephthah. Jephthah and Shoot. Nut. God Nut. <coughs> Holding up. So there you have your belief of heaven. You look up in the air every day. You go outside on a plane fast and you go look up to heaven. <coughs> the Sputnik went up there. They're still looking for the angel near him. <laughs> and you're looking up for heaven. And if you're married or got a woman, you're going to bed with heaven tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what is what the caption that says? God of the ear shoot.
but that doesn't change the original teaching. You say again, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. When you're burying a man or a woman or a little baby, uh-uh, they didn't say that. That's a distortion of what the ancient Africans of the Nile taught. He says that man came out of a woman, heaven, and he returns to the twat of Aset, or you call her Isis. Man returned from the place he came. He came from the woman's vagina and he returns to Isis' vagina. Spiritually. <laughs> Spiritually. <coughs> and thus, the African gave us two spirits to justify his logic, his science. He gave us the spirit that remains, please somebody tell me when it's time to stop. The spirit that remains with the body, the ka, the ka, K-H-A, or the heart soul, heart soul, symbolically of course. That remains with the body, the cat. But when the man dies, the ancient Africans say, he moves on, something about him moves on to appeal to Goddess Ma'at. Goddess Ma'at. To appeal for the man, and that the back or the spirit soul moves on to appeal to Goddess Ma'at, reciting in front of her while she weighs his heart symbolically against the feather of truth from Ethiopia, an ostrich feather, and the heart must weigh the same, not like it is in Washington, D.C. The African spoke of the scale of justice of my act. Here is the floor. This is the scale, the stand. This is the scale. This is the same distance from this. It's parallel to this. The one in the United States Supreme Court is this way. And then you expect the crackers to give you justice. <laughs> I didn't have any idea, and I still, I still let Pablo 
Doc, keep saying the evil eye. <laughs> there is nothing evil about that eye. That is symbolic of what a man has to do for justice. Horus O'Heru lost his eye, his left eye, fighting his evil uncle, said Typhon, who had killed his father, the god of righteousness and justice, and for winning justice, righteousness, right, there was a price to pay. You expect to get freedom without a dead man. You expect to pray to get freedom. That a god from, I don't care what you call this god of the marriage, you could call him Ngai, you could call him Unkulunkulu, these are different African gods. Or you could call him Jesus, you could call him and Allah, you could call him and, and Jehovah. Unless you are prepared to die, you are not going to get freedom from nobody. And you're not ready to die. You are ready to die, you're ready to picket, you're ready to pray in, sit in, shit in, do all kind of things. So Africa came to the table because some of them died like anybody else. And I know many more got died because the PSC is still killing people. Now, I ain't talking about Mandela. I know you all get mad because I ain't called Mandela. I'm, I'm not a follower of Mandela. I am not following nobody who talk about integration.
and who got up to death to reconstruct her husband. We know this because Ta, God, Tahuti, Ta, was there recording as described. God, Amnut, was there as the dragon, ready if the heart didn't weigh against the fellow to eat it up, crush it. But that woman, Isis, came true, but she couldn't find one piece. His penis had been eaten by the Nile catfish. That's why Nubians don't eat catfish up to today. Huh? And Isis then said what? I will erect a symbol of his penis for the world to see and those who unman him shall never rest in peace. The Christians copied it for Jesus. But they didn't even let Jesus get a piece. <laughs> 33 years old. 33. 33 years old. And no sexual intercourse. Why? What's wrong with sexual intercourse? Because they had a sick mind about what sex is. They still got a sick mind about what sex is. Let's go down the line and see. I'm going to stop you for question and answer. Let's go down the line. If you marry that man, when you were 16, I give you a chance because I'm giving more than that. You really got. You can't stay. You can't stay for too much longer. I don't believe you. Yeah. Many are staying that long. Now, if you give him a piece before you got married, you have sinned. And your baby, you were born, you're going to give birth to that baby in pain. But if you marry the man, never been touched by your own hand, much less his, <laughs> until the honeymoon, and then you get a little piece, you're still sinning. It's a catch-22. <laughs>
I, I think that the honor of this And Jesus, and James the 
sister is an older brother. They copy it from the story of Horus. When you go to a place called Edfu, you see the temple of Horus the Elder. Strange. <coughs> when you go to the temple, you go to the temple at uh, Warit, which they call Karna. The temple, that temple bigger than all St. Patrick, St. John, the Divine, the, the Vatican, and all them put together with, with a lake and everything. You go down and see it. That's right, in Egypt land. But you're not going there because the Jews ran from there with a the flood. When the Red Sea, all the water went out the Red Sea in the, into the Indian Ocean. Can, have, can you picture the water going into the Indian Ocean from the Red Sea? What kind of a gorge you have? Can you picture pregnant woman, old woman, 90 years, walking down the side of that thing like, you ever seen Heckle and Jekyll? <laughs> How they go down the, walking like that. It's like walking up this wall, like that. And not one of them died, but all the Egyptians died. I told you, Pablo dog. <laughs> yes, all that in the book that was changed. And then, make it worse. You got one version, she got one version, he got another version. Didn't this, you want to know what's the word? A faggot and a woman. The woman is the real McCoy. The faggot is the virgin. Huh? When you go with a woman, there's a possibility of faggot. Now, see. When you go with a faggot, there's a possibility of do, do. Let's get it. No, I know. I want to make it. I want to make it real so that you can understand. I don't want you to know I'm for preference. I want to, see, you all got to do with that hyper little word. That's why you don't deal with things. With all them beautiful words. You understand? But to me, it's I, um, abnormal psychology. It is abnormal to believe that nature provides a penis to go into a rectum. Rather, in, when it's made for vagina. Now I know, if you're a faggot, I'm sorry, but that's what you're doing. That's bad. <laughs> you're all right, Don. You're all right. Now, I, I've got a little problem. I've been reading the Bible, too, for a while. And um, there is this story. Preachers, you know, my poor grandfather was a preacher, too. And, but he never told this way. He taught me to honor women. I mean, he sat us down. I remember when he sat me down, especially, to lay out some stuff. And there is this woman. Everywhere Jesus went and seen this woman is there also. Martha. No, Mary. Mary Magdalene. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, that know, that was his thing. Right. <laughs> see, in the church, they told us that the woman is a whore and a harlot. And I see that no, written no place, and even if I did, I wouldn't believe it. But I know that when everybody else gave up, this woman was standing at their tomb. After mama went back. Everybody, that's right. When the brother, when she go, she go to tell these brothers, your main man is alive and well, and he want to meet y'all, there, who was supposed to be his closest man, they gave up. I just want some elaboration on Mary, because everything that I see in the book shows that Mary was this man's wife and his woman, and I suppose they had sex and children too. Professor Rayford Smith at Columbia University uh, one of the senior professors of religion showed that there were documents showing Jesus had a family. Uh, he wrote it and it was in the Times and everything and he almost got fired from Columbia but he had tenure. And so they couldn't do anything about it. But it is common, it was, it was a common teaching of many Christian groups before the Nicene Conference. That one of the things that they decided at the Nicene Conference that uh, Athenesis opposed it. They, they were speaking that they had to show Jesus been born as a, in an immaculate conception if, in, if they were going to convince 
the people to respect the Jesus syndrome as they respected the ISIS. Remember that up until the Nicene Conference, that Christians celebrated the 25th of December as the winter solstice. The Christians were celebrating the 28th of uh, August as the date of Jesus' birth. So they switched it then to the 25th to counteract because the people who come out to celebrate the, the new woman, the, 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 uh, the coming of the new God, uh, and that's where the term uh, came from. Uh, SOS, Son of the Son, S-O-N of this S-U-N. Jesus is called the Son of the Son. Of the many names that everyone that Horus was called, Jesus was called, it was adapted for Jesus. Uh, Jesus is not more, but the Horus figure in, of modern time. I think John, Professor John Jackson in his book, Christianity Before Christ, gave us a good example of that. Also, Annie Besant, who was a book by the same name, uh, if we go back to um, An Eclipse, the two volume word by Sir Godfrey Higgins, we will find that. Uh, we we'll find comments about it in Smith, uh, Howard uh, W. Smith. For, forget it. No, first name, but it's got a W and Smith. Those are the two last but the name before that. Uh, Little Brown and Company. Uh, you will find reference. You will find reference to it by Sir, Sir James Fraser in the Golden Book, his uh, 13 volume work, and, and and so on and so on and so on about this. Uh, uh, there's reference to this by Thomas W. Jones uh, and his book Bible Myths and Their Parallels in Other Religions. Uh, all these and other works, early works, deal with Jesus, a family man. In uh, um, Levy, in his translation of the Aquarian Gospel, speaks of it, speaks of Jesus throwing the boy off the, off the, uh, the building because of Martha. But the Lord told him, I'm a jealous Lord. And if the Lord could be jealous, why not me? <laughs> what do you think he's jealous about? Eating a piece of bread? Jealous over Miss Lord, <laughs> the goddess. But you all can't think in terms of that. Because, you see, women believe that their body has been damned and cursed. You believe that something wrong with your body. Yet you give birth to everything except including God. If you can't know who disagree with me in here, it's going to be women more than men. Because you accept the curse of Eve. That your vagina is damned. That's why you got the menstrual period. You believe that you get sick once a month and uh, all kind of nonsense. And you have pain because of this curse. Because you went to bed with Adam because of the snake coming down the tree. You don't have pain because of no damn curse. You got pain because of five inch diameter hair is ripping through your vagina and a 12 inch shoulder. That's why you got pain. And the reason a man don't got no pain, even a two inch diameter piece of doodle -doo gets hard and he can't deliver it. That's why he can write a joke like that. Then you curse. There's nothing curse but you. I wish you would, when you get your curse, close your leg and break his damn neck. Nobody tells you you curse and all that stupidness. They don't curse about you. A, a, a big elephant. When an elephant giving birth to a small one, it's hollow. <laughs> then your, 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 your pelvic region ripping apart, all those bones, the joints are coming from each other to let a baby pass. There ain't no damn curse, that's pain. <laughs> <laughs> and you, women, you lead, you lead the fight against that nonsense. It's your duty to tell your young boy child that to give birth to him had nothing to do with the curse. It was the most glorious act you could perform. And you'd be proud of it. Shout from the, from the, from the delivery room, the bush or the taxi, to the high heavens that you're performing the God's work to give birth to a 
such as me. Uh, Dr. Ben, uh, as I sat and listened, I remembered something that had uh, taken place, I guess, about three or four years ago. A film had come out called The Last Temptation of Christ. And in the film, one of the, the um, lines that people had a problem with was a reference where Jesus said, heaven is between the legs of a woman. That was one of the lines from the film that many Christians obviously felt uh, was insulting. And so I, when you lectured, and I also heard something earlier, sister, I wrote a book, about the same thing. And the title of the book is Heaven is Between a Black Woman's Legs. <laughs> but I didn't originate the love. You could look in the Book of the Dead, and Pepe II said it. And he was in this fourth dynasty, sixth dynasty. So that's 2000 and BC. He said, Heaven is, but he said, Heaven is at the end, the inner end, that means the upper end of a woman's leg. So that uh, it's not unique for me, right. and it's not unique for those who spoke about Jesus. Because it has been said, but the, the oldest time I know is Pepe, who said it, uh, it's recorded in the Book of the Dead. Men knew that from the beginning, in many aspects. I got proof of it. It got to be, because look what I was as I entered. I only, if you have to take a, very strong microscope to see me and what became me with the egg and, and, the, uh, uh, and the sperm. What became me? Couldn't be even see but, but an ordinary microscope. Now I go in there and mature, went through all kind of evolutionary shapes. Huh? Then I come out looking with a big monstrous head, <laughs> funny looking body. You understand, with some funny foot that look like it ain't belong there, like a frog. And look at me now. I went through all kinds of stages, creeping, doing the falling down, doing all kinds of stuff. You tell me it ain't heaven? And if it isn't, he and if it's heaven, shouldn't I worship it? My mama told me I didn't have no birthday. And I still don't have a birthday, even though I'm 73 years. My mama had the birthday. <laughs> Your mama had the birthday. She just tell you, give you a little break to tell you, you did something. I didn't do nothing. I wouldn't even come out. She had to push me out. <laughs> <laughs> my mama made me kneel down each year on my feet, on my knees, in front of her and stick my head to her womb and talk to me and say, now, this year, you are good for nothing. <laughs> you did this, boom. You did that, boom. <laughs> and then when she was tired with that right hand bombing me, I realized she may kill me. <laughs> then she said, and my great son. <laughs> and I felt good. Mm -hmm. so she said, now let me tell you, but I love the way you did. Your son told me you did this for him. Your woman, not your wife, your woman tell me is this? <laughs> yeah, she never said wife, she said woman. But my wife is a woman. And he said, she said, your woman said this and that, or I love you, and you did this, and and she went on, and then finally she said, get up, my man. First time I became a man, and mama hugged me and kissed me and, and shake and roll with me, and said, no, let me anoint you. Mother, take the, 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 the thing like the acepeta, the garlic and the different thing like that, stink, and, and then rub me here. Go forward and be good for the next year. Anoint me, make me a Christ. Huh? Where, where, I, where, where did I get a birthday from? You got children? She got birthday. She birthed some children. Who gives you a birthday? You do the damn thing. She did. <laughs> but you see, again, we got a Western thing. I got a birthday. Would you bring the toys, bring the present, bring me a, bring, bring me a Uzi. Yeah, I, the, the, the original question that I wanted to, to ask in reference, that was something that I thought about. 
It was in reference to, uh, I know you had mentioned about your uh, Grand Master in the Freemasonic Lodge having been one of your best teachers. And the question kind of speaks to... I can't tell you anything about that. Oh, well, I, I recognize that, you know, given the, the um, uh, vows of secrecy. Uh, no, we, the, have, we don't have for secrecy. We have things that you don't know, you can't talk about. So it's not secret. If you know it, you talk about it. There, there's, are you familiar with... Most, there's a, uh, a text out by Mustafa Ilani, Vector 2. And in it, uh, after having interviewed uh, Freemasons and people who are members of the Shriners, he noted that the higher in degrees that you go, the more information you receive about uh, spirituality and the Quran is used. In essence, that if you become a, a Shriner, if you've gotten, I think it's 30 seconds, I'm not a Mason, so again, I know when I can speak about it, but I'm not breaking any vows of, you know, if there are, of secrecy. Uh, but no, well, the Shrine is a poor example because they're not but a, a fun, they're a bunch of clowns. Uh, they call it the fun house. And all they do is make asses of themselves. Uh, I like to tell what it is. That's the worst thing you could do. You have some sort of validity going in the Mason, but not the Shriners. A bunch of men act, walking around acting like asses. Sticking women and, and uh, running behind dogs and all that kind of nonsense. Uh, it, uh, that, that's pure ignorance. Uh, and you got to say what it is. And how you going to talk about secrecy? How are you going to have a secret organization marching down the street in a uniform? <laughs> what secret about it? Looking like a penguin. Dressed up like a little penguin. Now, I like to tell it like it is. The ancient brothers at home in the craft of Amun Ra never marched in any street with any uh, uniform. As a matter of fact, you could be standing up right next to one, have no way of knowing. You have no way of knowing. Uh, the brother may be talking to another one up and down. And unless you are a brother, you don't know. He will talk to a brother in front of you in the English language. And you're hearing everything and don't know a word. And he's using the word that you know in your dictionary. And you still don't know what he's talking about. No, that is. But, but that is so that uh, the brothers will meet and pass information to each other and don't write it down. That is one of the reasons that it is, in the West Africa, that they call it griot and other place, that we have been trained, Europeans can't understand it, to pass information to each other without the written word, it doesn't mean, and still have a writing. Some things are written down. There are few books written, few books written, and they are kept by the, appro the pro uh, appropriate persons and they, there comes a time, if you live long enough, you too will see the book. It's not in secret, but when you were born, you did not eat meat and rice. You had your mother's breast or a bottle. Then you move to another stage and she gives you some pop, cornmeal pop, a little rice mashed up. Then you got another stage, she gives you some little meat, or she give you a bone with not no, no points in it. And you got mom and the put it in the teeth. Then she give you some strong meat until you could rip with molars and everything like that, right? So you don't say mama was being secretive when she didn't give you the meat and you only two months old. So we are not secretive. So in essence, the shrine you say is, is really just jesters, like court jesters. Is, it's not to be taken seriously. They they, 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 it, it's called a fun house. Okay. It is a jive house. Okay. In other words, you have to be a mason to be a shriner, right. but you don't, have to be a, you don't have to be a shriner to be a mason. Right. One, many people, most sensible people don't join the shriner unless you want to play. And in the West, there's only 22 degrees that's valuable anyhow. The others are called effable rights, I'll tell you that much. And they're political, especially the last one, the 33rd. It got nothing to do with study. Now, when you're talking about at home, you're talking about a complete circle, and you have to study for everyone. No, not one of them is giving you to you in a bunch like three tonight and five tomorrow night, nothing like that. You got to study science, law, engineer. People ask me, why you, you could cook? I, I like cooking. Why you could play a certain instrument? 
Why you do mathematics? Why you're an engineer? Why you're this and that? Because it said what? I needed 40 years of training. 40 years. And after I become 70 years of age, I must have completed everything I'm going to do because I then must come senior active. I may sit, but I can't vote because I'm subject to dote. I may carry out an order, specific order, but I cannot be given orders because I may dote. They don't say I'm doting because they've got to check me for each order to see if I've started doting when I reach 70. I may counsel, I may lecture, but I may not vote. I may not make the decision by this. This is as much as they're going to tell you about these things. But there are certain things, that's why I said, that there are certain stages. We are not Westerners. There are certain stages. And by the way, women, some women are complaining, why can't women join the craft of a moon? Because we will let any woman join as she can be circumcised. If she can take off penis and be circumcised, we will let her join. The women will let us join theirs. If we have a vagina and we can menstruate, then they will let us join theirs. We got no argument. I don't know why women, you argue with each other. There are certain things that are women that a man will never understand. A man will never understand the feelings of giving birth even if he's a gynecologist or obstetrician, he may sympathize, but he don't know. A woman who has never given birth wouldn't know. Okay? And I'm not jealous about it. I help them. I will help the sister to go there and have her thing. Because when she come out, as long as she still loves me, I don't care. And why she worrying about what I'm doing there with the other brothers? As long as I come up, I still want her and not one of them brothers. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Ben. <laughs> we like to hear you all night, and you do have a good sister.